Hello. Today we're going to talk about the modal verb should. If you would like a worksheet to fill out while you're watching this video, click on the link in the description under the video. That link will take you to the worksheet, print it out, and you can fill it out while you listen to the lecture. So today we're going to talk about the word should and three different meanings that it can have or ways we can use should. Sometimes we use it for advice. Sometimes we use it for expectation or what we expect to happen. We also use it for regrets. First, let's look at some examples where we're using should to give advice. And it's kind of strong advice where we think this is the best answer to this problem. So if we look at this person, we see the red eyes, the lines under the eyes. Our advice for this person, you should get more sleep. Notice we have should plus the base form of the verb, get. Uh, we look at this person and we think this person does not look healthy. He should lose some weight. We have he plus should plus the base form of the verb, lose. One more piece of advice here. They should put on some clothes. Okay, they plus should plus the verb put. So one note has to do with subject verb agreement with should. If you look here with different subjects, you, he, they, the verb does not change. So it's you should get, he should lose, they should put. I don't need to put an S here because of he. When I use should, it's the same no matter what verb, what, no matter what the subject is. That's different when we use these verbs by themselves. By themselves, if I use these verbs by themselves, we have you get more sleep, he loses, notice the S here because it's present simple, and they put. I don't have to worry about the, that when I'm using should. Okay. So once again, when I use should, it's followed by the base form of the verb, no ed, no s, no ing, just should plus the verb. That makes it easy. That's a good thing. Let's move on. We'll talk about should when it's about our expectation or what we expect will happen. Here we have the bus stop, a lot of people waiting. The expectation is the bus should be here any minute. And here, the weather forecast said, that means this is what they said, this is what we expect to happen, it should be sunny today. That's our expectation. Sometimes with weather forecasts, it's diff what actually happens is different from what we expect. The weather forecast said it should be sunny today, but today it's raining. Here's another example of expectation. Students should raise their hands to speak in class. 
Let's move on and we'll talk about regret. By regret, I mean past advice. Something someone didn't do, but was probably a good idea. So with regret, we're looking to the past and we need to show this past idea. And we do that with have. So the man should have stopped his car earlier. You can see the accident. This man, he should have stopped his car earlier. Did he stop his car earlier? No, there's an accident right here. This man, he's standing outside, it's so cold. He should have worn a heavier coat. Did he wear a heavier coat? No. So th this is his regret. We have should plus have plus worn, which is the past participle of the verb. So when we're talking about regrets, we're looking to the past. We show this past idea by using should plus have plus the V3. By V3, what I mean is the past participle. So if I have the verb eat, V1 is eat, V2 is ate, the past simple, and V3 would be eaten, the past participle. So after have, we use the past participle, the V3. Also, whenever we are pronouncing should, have, a lot of times we pronounce it quickly and it changes how it sounds. If I say this slowly, he should have worn a coat. But when I say it more quickly, it might sound more like this. He should have worn a coat. Now, should of, that's how I pronounce it, but it's really not how I spell it. The way I spell it is this way. I could pronounce it like this. Sometimes I even pronounce it like this. He should have worn a coat. He should have worn a coat. When I'm writing, he should have worn. There's also a progressive form of should to talk about expectations or advice for things in progress. So here, if we look at this classroom, I see a lot of bad behavior. The students should be sitting quietly. That's my expectation. They are not. They shouldn't be doing the things they are doing. I see one student shouldn't be throwing a paper airplane. This student here shouldn't be writing on the desk. Uh, the student in the back row right here, he shouldn't be pulling on that girl's hair. If we look at this picture here, we see a big problem. The clown should be wearing a seat belt. It's not safe. So with the progressive form of should, we have should plus the verb be, and then verb plus ing. This verb be here, it's always be. I don't have to change it if the subject changes. I don't have to change it to is or am. It's just always should plus be. Now, with the progressive form, there's also a past progressive form as should, which would look like should plus have plus been plus verb plus ing. That's a lot.
So here's an example. We can see the accident here. It looks like this red car was driving too fast. The red car shouldn't have been driving so fast. This would be our past advice for the driver of that red car. They shouldn't have been playing with matches in the house. That was very dangerous, and now their house is on fire. And we see here is a paper, the grade, an F. And we think, oh, this student, every night, probably playing video games, watching movies, this student should have been studying more at home instead of messing around. So, to review, we've talked about should. I talked about how we use it as advice, to talk about expectation, and also to talk about our regrets or past advice. The different forms that we looked at we had should, where it's just should plus the verb. When I talk about regrets or past advice, it becomes should plus have plus v3. There's also the progressive form with should plus be plus verb ing, and the past progressive form, should have been verbing. And I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about should and how it works in sentences and what it means. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.